I'm Tim Taylor and I have awesome news. Challenging, but awesome. And that is our children, our orphanage is safe. John Mark, I just got a re report from him. And um, while I asked to report to sh for history's sake for Kingdom League, I want to I want to share a few excerpts from his uh, testimony about what occurred. And so uh, in 2021, that's when uh, the junta uh, removed the duly elected uh, government and took over the country and began oppression and stuff. As a matter of fact, if you really want an update about what's really happening in their nation, I would encourage you to go check out the Free Burma Rangers because they've been ministering there the whole time, serving. And it's like uh, this uh, March 11th, 2024 report, Burma Army puts more civilians in the crosshairs after recent gains by the resistance. Uh, on March 3rd, it talks about an airstrike that they did and bombs rained down. And, and I could click on this, I could show you the pictures of the people that have been killed, wounded, and the oppression that goes on and the awful things that they do. But what I want to do right now is I want to share with you guys how our folks made this treacherous journey from Burma over here to uh, Missouri, India. And um, praise God, it is a miracle. I'm telling you, I am absolutely convinced that those that are part of that prayed with us, that's uh, contributed financially to this challenge, you guys have literally helped save impact 26 lives that could have been killed. And you'll understand what I mean once I um, share the testimony here. Let me, let me get back to John Mark's testimony. So he says this, the PDF defeated many wars and many in the Junta army became losers in many areas. And it says the military set fire to villages. They killed civilians. They looted things. Matter of fact, when this whole thing began in February uh, and March in 2021, they actually bombed our house of prayer. They bombed the village next to it that had his uh, many of his relatives there. And they actually shot one of the intercessors that served one of the um, uh, in the house of prayer. They shot her in the head. And so this is the this is what they're dealing with is pure evil. Anyway, it goes on to say about that's how it started. It says it talks about the severe civil war. Millions left their homes and fled to the border. It's very bad. Recently, the junta decreed and legislated a new law of conscription that every young man that every young men and women girls between the ages of 18 and 35 must join the military be trained and go to war to protect their power and their wealth the military started arresting young people and he says that's one of the main reasons we also left home and fled to the indian border my friends john mark and sophia they didn't um, choose to leave with so many others three years before they chose to go back and serve the children that were left uh, fatherless and motherless. And they were serving them. They didn't want to leave even now. But because of that and because they had one of their sons as well as one of the elder, uh, older orphans that were all both getting ready to turn 18, they were concerned about them being forced into, constri uh, into conscription. And so... Uh, they didn't want to leave the other orphans behind, so they left. They took them all. They left with their family and all. So anyway, it says, we are 26 people. My family, which is six, 14 orphans, two teachers, and four people of my elder brother's family. We left in, uh, we packed our clothing and took some important documents. We left everything else. They left their home, small truck, three motorcycles. In fact, moving out of town is very risky because the military doesn't allow them to move. They are controlled and guarded everywhere. So they had to sneak past various checkpoints it says we hired a very expert man to help get us out from the town we moved early in the morning around 5 a.m. while the army was sleeping so we could sneak out from the town as the driver drove through the jungle way we actually were so worried because the army used to shoot with the artillery at fleeing vehicles but we escaped nicely without any problem in the uh, early morning of tw uh, the 28th of February praise the Lord the other two vehicles that fled with uh, next to us were arrested by patrolling army, and they were in great danger. One vehicle who fled next to us also was in an accident, and one couple and their daughter died on the spot. Very sad. But this highlights 
the role that you guys have played in this situation. I am absolutely convinced the strategic prayer mobilized by our house of prayer and the, the all the you that are connected with Kingdom Lee, you guys played a role in these 26 people's lives. You made an impact right now that was a life and death situation. This is amazing. It says, our driver drove through the forest way, very rocky on the mountain for the whole day towards the Indian border. All our children got car sick and vomited on the way, but God protected us from all kinds of dangers and accidents when we reached the border about 4 p.m. Normally, that trip takes about a third of the time that he's mentioning here, and that's because they had to go through the jungle. And it goes on to talk about how after that, they then made it across the border and they uh, then made it to their brother-in-law's house by 6 p.m. As a matter of fact, if we go over here, here's a picture of them leaving that night uh, early, early in the morning before the sun came up. And let's see if I can get, uh, here we go. And this is them arriving at the border of India. Again, they they could only leave with basically the clothes on their back and a few other small items. They had to leave their home and the boys' dorm and girls' dorm with all the equipment that we had helped set them up with and the, the computers and TVs and things like that they could use for teaching and training. They had to leave all of that. And this is them arriving and having a meal at their brother-in-law's home uh, when they finally arrived in India. And... Uh, Anyway, I'll, let me go on with the story here, his testimony. He says, uh, so they arrived uh, at the new Champai, and we stayed temporarily at my brother-in-law's rented house. And then they found a place to rent. Uh, they were having difficulty because no one wanted to give 26 people a house. They would have to rent a more than one. And it talks about um, they found a place. The owner said it was good for them to move there. Um, and they said one morning an unknown person threw a stone through the window of glass and it's broken and thank god no children were hurt the house owner scolded me and my wife very sharply and said you are illegal refugees you have no rights to stay at my home go out right now i don't care who you are i don't care about your orphans work this is not myanmar this is india if you do not move i will complain to the police and you will be arrested and it goes on to talk about how distraught he and sophia were and he says, she found a, a, a rich widow. And the title of this portion of this testimony is The Rich Widow Blackmailed Us. He says, the, one widow said, you can build a simple house with low cost in my yard and I will give you rent cost every month and you can stay with us because I sympathize with you. And I thought that was God's answer to prayer for us. And we were, were beginning to dig to build a place, to begin to build a place for them, to a shelter for them to stay in. And they were going to the head of the village where they were going to uh, make the agreement. And she says, he says, she changed her words saying that I do not like that bad house to build in my yard. I want at least $5,000 that you will give me and I will build your house. So he says, we canceled everything that day and God protected us from such wicked people. And then he talks about a shopkeeper that they met and how... Um, he knew about how they were chased out and he told us about his sister's farm uh, in the village side. So we moved to that farmhouse that is used for keeping cement bags. That place is 30 minutes from Chempai. And we went there and stayed there for now. So God is good. We have found a rent house. There are no markets, no banks, no schools, no hospitals. But God is our everything. He will provide. He will take care of all of our needs. It says God moves upon the heart of the people. And lastly, we can settle in a farmhouse. Very nice. He goes on to talk about their vision. He says, refugee status here is very lowly. We cannot withdraw money from the banks. We can't buy a vehicle. We can't drive. Even the government schools and refugee children cannot be admitted. We felt India is not the land for us to live many years, but we felt like it's a temporary place. But God gave us a scripture in Matthew 2, 13 through 23, where God, Jesus fled to Egypt because of King Herod wanted to kill him. We pray Myanmar is a peaceful soon. And, uh, uh, and so they hope to return. Uh, there one day when the conflict is resolved. 
He says, in comparison, though, the India education is much better than me and Mars, so our orphans and my own children will get a good education. They want to send their eldest son and the uh, oldest orphan boy to uh, study God's word at a Bible college in Aziwal. And I'm really happy to report that they found a primary school called Hope for Tomorrow, a middle and high school called Cornerstone that they can send their uh, children to. And then finally, the Bible College is the Boontain Memorial Bible College in Aziwal. And so uh, he shares the challenge that they're facing. And right now, uh, they have need, uh, he, he describes their needs for the, uh, remodeling the farmhouse because the farmhouse, the place where most of them will stay, it was merely a concrete open room. And then they were going to get the second floor of this three-story farmhouse. And that open room was just filled with cement bags. And so they moved everything out. And then the process of building and remodeling and turning it into bedrooms and places where they can sleep and building a kitchen, uh, running electricity and things like that so they can have the basic accommodations right now. And so praise God, they're, they're, camp they're like camping out right now, but uh, they're so thankful they found a place that's relatively safe, even though it's rather Spartan. Um, so anyway, we need to raise, we want to raise about $6,000 right now, which will take care of helping with the remodel and the setup, as well as I want to be able to send a couple of our Indian ministers there to check on them right now and to minister to them. And these are uh, Apostle Nani and his brother Praveen, uh, who uh, they've, uh, we help, we've been working with them since 2015. And uh, they've uh, established India Prayer League, and anyway, I'll share more about that later. But I want to send them to them to help them to minister to them to help them negotiate some of the challenges with the Indian people. Um, in addition to that, in the near future, Brendan and I plan to go and uh, to check on them to see what longer-term solutions might be made available to them and explore what our father might want to do. But for today, right now, what we want to do is raise another $6,000. The monies that have come in thus far, roughly almost 4300 has basically paid for their escape. And I want to thank you. They are so grateful. Words can't capture how grateful they are. But um, praise God, they're safe and they're healthy. Uh, and this, uh, their, their escape was um, not really planned in that they didn't plan to go. They didn't want to go. It wasn't until the military began the conscription and it threatened their own children that it's like, okay, we have to leave. We can't allow them to be uh, conscripted into this army because I won't go into all the awful things that the military does and what they force them to do. Um, but suffice to say, it was a miracle absolute miracle. God did miracles. God made blind, made seeing eyes blind. They hid them and protected them. I mean, my goodness, as I describe how they left and whatnot, the people that left with them, something happened bad to every one of the other vehicles, but they were safe. And that's the power of you praying and the importance of us being in covenant, working and praying with each other. And that's the power of covenant, if you will, and so I'm very grateful for the House of Prayer, Northwest Life Center, and all of those, uh, all of you in Kingdom League who actually helped pray and also contribute to their escape. And I want to thank you. Right now, we need to actually raise uh, $2,300 a month. Actually, the, the the budget says they need $2,302 a month, but. Um, uh, we, we've we actually got right now a commitments of about a fourth of that every month. And so we want to increase that, obviously, so we can uh, meet their needs. And because uh, John Mark isn't just, um, uh, he didn't just do an orphanage. This orphanage came out of the house of prayer. And he talks about here, I want to read you this. He says, Education is better than me and Mars, so our orphans, my children, will get a good education in English here in India. My eldest son and biggest orphan will go to study uh, God's Word in the Bible school at Aziwal. Right now, Myanmar is not safe for young people, and in the meantime, our young people will be equipped in India for some years. And when we go back, our young children can do great ministry of soul winning and building the kingdom and transforming the nation. And that's the part that I wanted to share with you. This isn't just an orphanage. 
These are people that are trying to raise up young men and women with a destiny, with a vision and goal to transform all seven spheres of society. The One Church, One Day strategy was, was imparted deep within them. They have done a powerful work. Uh, John Mark worked with me for several years in, in using uh, sharing that strategy across uh, Burma as and Myanmar, as well as down even into the underground church of Malaysia. So I want to thank you again. I want to pray that um, I would encourage you to go to our website. If you choose to give and partner, you can uh, choose either missions or orphans right now. Either one of those will go to this project here right now to these people. And I just want to thank you and bless you. I want to tell you what a powerful impact that you've made. And I want to pray that uh, our Father's will is done. Uh, Father, we just pray right now for John, Mark, and Sophia, and the children, and all those who escape. We're very grateful for that, Lord. We pray that each one would fulfill the destiny you've made for them. And Father, we are just so grateful. We give you thanks and praise and glory and honor to see a powerful answer to prayer manifested before our eyes. And Lord, we count it a privilege that you gave us the opportunity to be a part of seeing your will accomplished on earth as it is in heaven. Bless you all and thank you so much.